Hi everyone, so last year I made a video about India's JEE advanced exam, but I don't think that I really did it justice. So for this video I wanted to invite some experts in science and engineering to share their thoughts on the exam. They spoke about the difficulty of the questions, whether they thought the exam would prepare students well for the future, and also shared their thoughts on exams as a whole. I also spoke to a couple of Indian students who took the JEE and are now doing research work here in Australia. For those not familiar, the JEE exam is an admissions exam into engineering colleges and it's sat by over a million students competing for just a few thousand places. You sit two papers each three hours long on the same day and it's all multi-choice. So with that, let's hear what people had to say about it. I think this is a, it's, it's, it's a very tough exam. So if I was a student at high school and if this was intimidating when you first read it, I would not be surprised. And if, if it's not at all intimidating for you, then I would say congratulations because you're a very impressive student. <laughs> well, it's really, really interesting. It looks uh, pretty uh, difficult. For example, the question in physics, uh, you know, I couldn't, probably can't answer uh, you know, maybe most of it now, uh, though maybe 30 years back, uh, I could do. You know, these, these exams seem, you know, they're very long. They have a, a, a very wide variety of questions they cover and they're, they're hard. I, I think um, any student who comes up against these exams is going to feel pretty lousy by the end of it. I'd probably, you know, leave the, the exam room crying if I was in year 12 and had to do this. Yeah. Good luck. Good luck. <laughs> so when we compare this uh, JE exam uh, with uh, uh, some of the subjects that are taught here in uh, some of our universities in Australia, so here is a question paper I was looking at. The depth of questions that are asked can be even difficult for students in the first or second year who are studying in uh, bachelor degree level in Australia. It's really quite ambitious that they're trying to test chemistry and physics and maths and the paper is laid out fairly nicely in that you have to earn one mark per minute. Looking at the questions, uh, a lot of them are in some sense sort of elementary in the sense that they use the kind of maths taught in high schools, although in some areas I would say the syllabus in calculus and a couple of other areas goes somewhat beyond what is currently taught in Australian schools or currently examined in Australian schools. But a lot of the questions are basically tricky or slightly sneaky, but also don't necessarily require you to work through the question in full detail. Uh, in, with multiple choice questions, uh, you, you're, you have to simply decide, can I reject this possibility or not? There is some attempt to stop people gaming that way by applying penalties to some wrong, to some wrong answers. But still, it's very much uh, a race against the clock. I think the mathematic questions are clever. Um, it uh, looks for the person's understanding of the matter just r rather than doing some uh, direct questions. So in that sense, uh, I, um, you know, they are, they are okay, they can, they can be done. Uh, and you know, some of these concepts uh, I do even use in my uh, course here in, in, the, in, in master's course here, especially those uh, involves with uh, um, a system of linear equations and determinants and those concepts. So concepts like high spin and low spin um, in organic complexes, that's something that at the University of Melbourne in first year chemistry we would treat in second semester. There was a question on essentially Arrhenius equations, so rates of a rate of a reaction as a function of of free energy, of, of the Gibbs free energy. So here we go, it, it asks you something like, the activation energy of the backward reaction exceeds that of the forward reaction by 2RT. So again, you've got to, basically, I think you, you'd, have to, you'd have to sketch this out. You'd have to think about, okay, if, if, the, if the back reaction is exceeding the forward reaction, what's the, what's the reaction free energy? Um, so it's not just the concepts that are difficult. I think it's asking you in a way that is, that is tricky. You have to think about, you, it's not just enough to know the equation and, and you're, you're going to throw in the numbers. You've got to think about it before you get the number that you're throwing into the equation. And obviously, they're, and they're not letting you have a calculator, so 
I guess another, another challenge there. Definitely this will set up a, a basic, uh, ba you know, like a background and a baseline. So you could imagine that all the IIT students would have come with, they would have had formed up the fundamentals. Uh, but from then onwards, there are so many things to learn because after uh, you come to the IITs, there is still, you know, s only uh, it will be like a bell curve again. You know, for example, uh, you give a f uh, give an exam uh, exam to a you know very tough exam and choose the best in the world, and then give them them another exam, and still again the performance is going to be uh, like a bell. But this happened to be this is kind of something that is a it's kind of basic needed basic uh, foundations for engineering. Uh, but I, I would guess r r nearly the majority of them would be ready to do for, you know, go for uh, especially engineering education. And that, that explains why, for example, IIT students are, you know, IIT graduates are doing well around the world. Yeah. I had a look at a couple of the one-hour math sections of papers, and I would say I would be fairly challenged to, to get a decent result on those in an hour. Uh, partly because as a professional mathematician I'm interested in actually telling a story when I answer a problem. I want to lay out why the answer I'm producing is the answer. Simply being able to say, oh, the answer is 27 to me is not so helpful or so interesting. Uh, and in terms of future success in, in mathematics or indeed in many scientific disciplines, the ability to reason properly and to explain your reasoning clearly is terribly, terribly important. So while I have no reason to believe that using the exam the way it's used isn't selecting very bright students for the engineering colleges that they're going to, it's not clear to me that it's the optimal selector of that. Uh, and there is also the ugly question of, of coaching uh, and unequal access to resources. We all know that in any educational system, if you go to a good school, well resourced with the best teachers and so on like that, you expect a better outcome. That's ultimately the, the, the main justification for spending money on education as a society, that if you work harder at it, you produce better results. But with these race against the clock style examinations, uh, there's a, a, a trade-off between the student's ability in the subject, natural intelligence and other things like that, uh, and they're having been trained to deal with examinations of this type. Exams can have different purpose and entry exams uh, that are for, sort of in a form of a drill type of questions usually require students to prepare a lot before to practice. Brain is like any other muscle, the more you practice it, the, the better it gets. So um, when you have a large pool of candidates and only a small number of spaces, usually you have drill exams because what they're showing is whether the candidate is serious enough, whether they're able to practice and how they perform under um, time-limited, uh, pressured uh, environment uh, conditions. They're not necessarily prediction whether that candidate will then do very well in the next step of education. So right now I have uh, you know two students who from Indian Institute of Technology, one from Delhi, other from uh, Madras. So right now uh, they are here and carrying out research on applying AI, artificial intelligence, and deep learning techniques uh, uh, for uh, medical application. So this work they are able to do within uh, you know uh, short span of time. They demonstrate uh, their uh, skills and ability. Uh, maybe a train is moving at this velocity, at this speed, uh, we need to consider is it really possible, is it feasible and uh, then there are questions about experience. Have I actually seen uh, a wire with Young's modulus of this, is it possible, yeah, is, it, is, it, is, it, is it really possible? So those type of questions are actually come from experience, so we actually have to try out various experiments in lab, we have to know that what exactly are the ranges of uh, practicality that exist in science. Two marks or maybe half mark can change your rank by great amount. It's possible. Like getting minus two marks can decrease your rank by 200 or 400. So you need to be very careful about
how to attempt which question to attempt and you need to be very sure about attempting the question maybe yeah for uh, other students that are preparing for yeah. je i yeah, feel that uh, uh, being open minded is what would really help right now all, all those that are thinking of maybe starting in uh, class 10 or 9 i feel that they they, they need to be open minded they need to be uh, considerate that yes uh, experience in life is very important apart from studies i feel that those experience can really help not only in je but also otherwise and uh, yeah uh, enjoying life is very important with studies one of my uh, thing would be don't be scared at the exam hall examination hall so i have experienced that in je main that's that's not good <laughs> so be open be free whatever you have studied just put everything and yeah all the best to all the aspirants yeah so when i look through it there was a lot of the questions that they are based very much on this sort of principle of memorization and recitation which i think is just an extraordinarily bad educational tool because it assumes that everyone has the exact same capabilities in that area and as someone who never had a great memory for these things and had to work extra hard um and then became a professional physicist for over a decade you realize very quickly that those particular skills don't help you much at all once you're actually working as a scientist because you know scientists you know get to the point where the material they're we're working with is so complicated you you just don't remember no one could remember it so that that skill of memorization and recitation is not not as helpful as people might think in science you know you tend to not be successful every day of your working career in fact quite the opposite you tend to you know not get anywhere for quite a while and then you'll have one lucky day where something will occur and your training will allow you to see that and identify it as being special and that's what makes a good scientist but for the other 360 odd days of the year you'll you'll have a you know pretty rough time and those sorts of skills those sorts of resilience skills and understanding how science and engineering work you know the process of falsification is not something that is tested at all in these sorts of examinations um and and it's unfortunate because you want people with those skills more than you want people with skills with memorized memorization capabilities when i looked at the jwe maths advanced maths exams it uh, led me to recall an interesting article by the great uh, british mathematician g h hardy indian uh, viewers of this blog uh will perhaps be well acquainted with hardy uh who was who is generally regarded as responsible for bringing the great indian uh, mathematician ramanujan to the attention of the world and so indian viewers should have some affection uh for hardy you have to understand that when hardy was a young man and through the early stages of his career mathematical education in the united kingdom was governed by the mathematical tripos examination for cambridge undergraduates this was a highly competitive examination uh an examination of great difficulty in the sense that it required a large amount of preparation and training uh paying for professional coaching and so on like that uh and on the basis of your tripos result this could lead to academic possibilities but also to uh to high positions in the british civil service in the colon in the colonial office and things like that in fact it was viewed generically as some kind of way uh of detecting deep intellectual superiority and ranking people and hardy didn't have much time for that hardy was actually quite a fan of examinations and quite a fan of lecturing as i am and this is unfashionable these days what he was not comfortable with was the tripos particularly in the in the the first version in which he encountered it in order for the exam to work the way it did a kind of culture had built up uh in terms of the setting of the questions the kinds of questions and so on like that and most of these had very little to do with mathematics that was either practically used or intellectually interesting or anything recent in mathematics it was basically uh playing certain games the examiners would try and set slightly sneaky questions on certain topics and students would hope to have practiced lots of questions of a vaguely similar type in the hope that they could get through this and hardy saw this as actually warping mathematical education in the united kingdom so hardy's argument was examinations of the tripos style 
are not a very good way to rank people intellectually and therefore perhaps one might consider doing things differently. It would be drawing a long bow to claim that the JEE advanced examination suffers from the defects of the tripos. Uh, nonetheless, there are elements of analogy there, uh, particularly the issue of expensive coaching uh, and the diversion of students away from studying subjects and developing their abilities and instead teaching them to do certain kinds of questions at great speed which is not actually uh, something of great use uh, either in the practical applications of mathematics in the real world or in academic mathem mathematics, scientific research or scholarship.